I'm Jean Vienne Nixon, your host for this week's On the Scene. Well, they say a good laugh can add years onto your life and release stress. Well, tonight we're showcasing some of the best comics from the Caribbean, and they will make you laugh to your belly bust. We'll be right back, and stay tuned for this week's On the Scene. You know they tried to kidnap me and all boys for along? And what happened? What do you mean what happened? A ransom? I poor people to run, you know. We reach a point in Trinidad now where men kidnap in the cell. If a fella kidnap himself, fly himself to Tobago, ring the father from Tobago and tell him, send a quarter million dollars. The father say, let me talk to the boy. Talking to his own son with her socks on the phone. Let me talk to the boy. They say if you send the money, you cut off your head and put it in a box. You see me holding that conversation, you know. Send the head. Yeah. And you know in Trinidad, the next thing again, they have a number now you can call for kidnapping. Anytime you see anything looking like kidnapping, call the anti-kidnapping squad. A old lady called them. Why do you see how much of them come up? Say, what happened, ma? She said, look, two young goats sleeping. That is two kidnapping. <laughs> Caribbean people, are you ready? All right. I'm glad for you. I too. Yeah. You're going? Wait, now wait, what's going on? Let me go, let me go. Let me go, yeah. Let me, let me come hey, on. Let me, the yeah. first thing will come on just now. That is after me. All you could wait, all you have to go. All you have to go. All, all you put in the room there and outside for. Stay there and behave. All you said, the first thing coming on. Hell going on here. Yeah. What is going on? All you send on everybody. Hurry up, the man. Hurry up, the man. Run. Run and go. Run and go away. And go away. You is who? What him? Red. Spry, I gone. Help! Help! I want to clear up one thing here tonight. Minga put out, I leave. I mean, I, I demand the house, but it's only someone licks a man got dead. Every minute she only hitting me, hitting me. I'm not your child, I'm your husband. Sometimes when she hit me so, I just want a ball, but the neighbors gonna know it's I who got any legs. Look at me wrong. Me and Freddie woman, I can, I can hit she back on her. Mother needs somebody to hold she to and behind she back. <laughs> How do you think I just feel being the only man in a meeting for battered women? <laughs> that woman always talking about domestic violence. Them don't know what domestic violence is, you know. Domestic violence is when you come home and meet a man on top of your wife, on top of your bed, and on top of that, you just ask you for a pillow to sleep outside on the couch. <laughs> and you get licks. <laughs> she tell me that when she hit me, it has hurt she more than it has hurt me. I say, well, why you don't save yourself all that pain and just let me cut your ass instead?
Let's see what goes around, comes around, but you know how long I wait until to see somebody cut she has. I, the other night I come home and meet she and a man on the bed that my grandmother gave me. He was lying on top of she on she side of the bed. So I was going to lie down on my side of the bed. I wasn't going to bother nobody. <laughs> she told me to sleep outside on the couch. Next morning I get up, she gave he breakfast before me. When I go in the bedroom, my bed mash up. Now I get real damn vexed. <laughs> oh, me get vexed because I sleep outside on the couch. Minga vest because she gave he breakfast before me. Minga vest because he mash up my bed. But you know what gave me mad? A man wake up in my house. My own house. And he didn't even tell me good morning. I hear them women and them in the meeting for battered women talking about fighting back. So I went home and tried it. <laughs> and she hit me. I hit she back. Well, like the last thing I remember. <laughs> the other day I asked she, I said, baby, how come you doesn't tell me when you have an orgasm? She said, because he doesn't be home. <laughs> this is serious thing, I'm only laughing. <laughs> the other night, she running me down to hit me. So I go on under the bed and I, she said, come out. I say, I'm not coming out. She said, come out. I say, I'm not coming out. She said, come out. I say, hey, I see my new house. <laughs> and if I say, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out. But wait now, she put me out, I mean, I, I leave. And I forget to wash the wears before I go. Now, if she go in that kitchen and find them wears in the sink, she'll come outside of here in front of this crowd. Oh my God, that could be called domestic violence. What should do, boy? Wash my wears. Crow domestic violence. Wash my wheels. You see me? I is a big man, right? So let me just go home and wash my wheels. Yeah. Yes, people. Caribbean Comedy Festival. Let me hear a round of applause out there one more time. That man is Louis Antoine from Trinidad and Tobago. Hey, Louis, Louis Antoine, Louis Antoine, come here. I never the first time or the second time performing here. Try to say something on that microphone, Louis. Louis, I'm not going back home. You're not me talking nothing about that. You see you? I ain't lying, boy. You stupid for two people. Yes, Tommy, you and your mother. Very embarrassing. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I not telling me that much. Like Trinidadian, we always cuss one another mother. I could cuss him back too. 
Well, I might get locked up. Louis Antoine, all your mother cow foot. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, out of Trinidad and Tobago, let me hear it one more time for Louis Antoine. Yeah. You know, sometimes I just get some jokes and people don't laugh at all. You know why? You know that they don't like it, you know. Sometimes they understand it. Because it's Caribbean joke. A fella sitting down home my evening, because in Trinidad he said, his son, hot, me and know where we do. All you laughing? If I bring up some of that here, you ain't feel nothing cold. Good boy, up, and up here kind of cold to a certain night, sir, because I'm up here a little while now, eh? All you want, don't ask me when I'm going back. Because I'm not carrying nothing. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with Caribbean comedy, I have a fellow coming up and saying, anybody out there from St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Yeah, we must have people. It's Caribbean people. Well, I want all of you to sit back, relax. Put all your hands together. Let's welcome from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Would you please welcome a man they call Saluch? Bring him on. Give us your give us your name and, and a little bit of your background history. My name is Salush. Okay, where are you from? I'm from the Sweet St. Vincent in the Grenadines. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what got you started in comedy? My mom. Your mom? Yeah. How how's when that? She, about? When she got pregnant, she went to my father and said, Listen, I'm pregnant. <laughs> he said, You gotta be joking. That was me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so your life started as a yeah, joke? Yeah, just as a joke, you know. I went to the bank. Okay. I went to the bank, you know. <laughs> and they said, um, I need a million dollars to borrow. Okay. They said, a million dollars? What's your occupation? I said, joker. You're supposed to clap. Mmm. Well, boy, after the war in Iraq, an old veteran come down to St. Vincent and get sick. So they carry him to the hospital. And he start to dead. Dead. Huh. He said, before I dead, I would love to kiss the American flag. They say no problem. They look all over St. Vincent. Not one single American flag. They go down on the beach. They meet a girl in the tongues. With an American flag tattoo. They say come. And they carry she in the hospital. They say mister. Would you kiss the American flag on this lady bottom. Because we can't find no other flag you know. He said, bring she. And she take off she clothes. And it, she do so. And the old man do so. No. He said, now turn wrong now, let me kiss Bush. <laughs> Salute! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yes. And you know in a house, when children getting big, it's a problem to have sexual um, thing. You have to be very mindful what you say, you know. You can't tell your wife, darling, get up like we do things. No, 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 no. When they try everything, and the dad, the darling say, look, let me get this damn thing a name. He said, what do you suggest? He said, I suggest washing machine. So when you come home, you want something, say, could I use the washing machine, please? Yes. Well, he come home now, looking for things in button. And he says, sweetheart, oh God, I would love to use the washing machine. She said, water gone. Well, he ain't dig nothing. He never got thing. He come back the next day. He said, oh, Jesus Christ. Woman, please, for God's sake, I love to need to use the washing machine.
She said, the host boss. Well, not going on, the fellow said, look, you see, they said, this is problem with me. Eh? And the next week, she went out to see friends. When she come back in stone, though, she said, sweetheart, come on, get up. You could, walk, you could use the washing machine tonight. Eh? He said, true? He said, mm-hmm. He said, well, I ain't really need that because I had a small load, so I use it. I uh, wash my hand now. Hand. It's Chinese people that's giving me the most trouble. Chinese got you know. But you see, we just get confused when Chinese people talking. It's we just misconstrue what they say. A Chinese man going in America, right away. And he go to the embassy. And the lady at the embassy, um, you go to America? He said, ah, ah, ah. Could you speak English, sir? I don't know, bye, bye. I'm being a bong. Well, she take a little book from Chinese to English. Say, Read that and come back. Boy, them Chinese are real intelligent. They are five minutes flat. Back. He said, I know English very well. I know English very, very, very well. So, well, if you know English very well, we now have a test to give you. And you have to use three words. Green, pink, and yellow in one sentence. He said, ah, oh, that's very easy. I go to my apartment. My phone say green, green. I pink it up and say yellow. Salute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to clap for them things, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I do have problems. Well, let me say this before I go in here. Because some people have stuck me and turned me and said, tell me how we talking things against uh, why I'm black people. I'm talking nothing against the white people. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you hear coming out of this stupid mouth that gives semblance to anything living or dead is only coincidence. Clap. We are the only country in the Caribbean that catching whale now. Whale. Last week, Saturday, they catch two whale in Beckley. A mother whale and a baby girl whale. And boy, I tell you, whale stupid unto them. The mother whale was teaching the baby girl whale how to swim. She go down, suck up the water, come up, blow it out. And every time you go blow it out, you go deeper. Well, the fisherman from Beckley come out with the harpoon. The mother whale say, look, you see them there? They come to kill you. Kill you, harpoon, dead, done. Go down, suck up the water, come up on the boat, and turn it over. So the girl will go down, suck up the water, come on the boat, and all the fishermen in the water, and the water will say, swallow them! The girl will say, watch me. Don't shit with me right about now. Sucking up is one thing, but is he swallowing seamen? Thank you! Salute! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, coming from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, let me hear it one more time for Salute! You're supposed to clap for that. Remember, it's Caribbean comedy. Take a little bow to Salute, man. Lovely. Yes. Thanks, um, Salute. I wonder if you're going back tonight. Ah, but when you come here, it's something else. You know? When you see you come a place like New York and you, you hit Manhattan, man. <laughs> you want to do some shopping, you know, brother? Yeah. I don't go quite Manhattan to shop. Shop in places like Utica. <laughs> Expensive suit right in Utica. Thank you very much, Bobbies. Right, see that little chap down there, boy. Fella walk into a restaurant, 
only male waiters sit down, look at the menu, they serve him. While eating, you observe one of the male waiters had a spoon in his pocket. He said, what are you doing with that? He said, well, gentlemen, that is in case uh, you're eating and maybe your spoon could fall on the ground. Instead of walking all that distance to the kitchen, we just take it out and we replace it. I know while I'm talking, that it happened. Well, I eat it and the spoon fell and the fella take it out. And then he said, you see what I tell you? Well, I got to like the restaurant. He went back the next day again. He said, he said the same fella. But this time he noticed he fly down the zip. Down on a little string hanging out. He said, partner, what's the reason for that? He said, well, sometimes when we're working on the floor here, sometimes we want to go to the urinal and you rain and rain and... And instead of taking the hand to take it out, we just hold the string. Psh, the fellow said I could understand that. But how you're putting it back in? He said, I ain't know about them, but I just use the spoon. <laughs> Caribbean people, let me make some noise. Let me hear you say, yeah, yeah. Right about now, people be going across to Trinidad and Tobago one more time. And I bring it on stage a lady. Just recently, she had a fantastic show out there in TNT. Coming to do something for us this evening. The name of this kit is Gladys the Mako. I want all you to sit back, relax, put all your hands together. Let's welcome from TNT, Nikki Crosby. Bring on Gladys. Marco. As I said, uh, on stage, uh, we just love doing this because it just so represents the Caribbean. And so many people can't get to come home. Right. And so it's our way of kind of bringing home to them and making right. them laugh and just remember home. And it's all about good memories. And right. all of us talk about things that are happening home. So it's a little piece of news too. Right. And, you know, a little piece of culture coming home. Right. Mavis, girl is me Gladys, mm-hmm, girl I call to see how you are feeling, but Mavis I tell you don't be sitting down, it's not good for the hemorrhoids, Mavis having hemorrhoids is nothing to be ashamed about, it just means you have a little more behind than everybody else. And plus you know your secret safe with me because you know I don't mind people's business. But I was talking to my cousin Betsy about it, and she... <laughs> Mavis, of course, I had to tell Betty she had to get the Epsom salts and the, the help from... Anyway, she told me about the Epsom salts, girl. She said that's good for the hemorrhoids. You're supposed to sit down in a little warm water in a basin and put it. Mm-hmm. So, girl, I went by Mr. John Parler to get the Epsom salts, and he told me he hope you're feeling better. But Mavis, of course, I had to tell him if he had to get the Epsom salts from. I want him to feel it for me. Anyway, he tell me, he, he sending him a bunch of ripe bananas for you. Yes, it's supposed to ease up the bow. Eh, hey, hey, Mavis, hold on. Look, Miss Mabel, daughter Irene Parson with your new child. Morning, morning, how you going? You look nice, Irene. So when you come out of the hospital, last week, that nice. Well, hold up the child face, let me see it now. Oh, look at that stinker. Girl, say your prayers, you know, God give you a gift from heaven, yes. And he's the splitting image of your husband. Mm -hmm. So what's the child name? Merasmus? It's nice, it have character, yes. Anyway, don't forget to bring the child for your auntie Gladys to see, eh? Mm -hmm. No, 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 on the phone with Miss Mavis. She having a little trouble with the hemorrhoids. <laughs> All right, I will. God bless her. Mavis. Girl, I now see Miss Janet, daughter Irene, passing with your new child. 
Now I don't want to say the child ugly, eh? But girl, I will say he's facially challenged. <laughs> See me have one squinge up, squinge up face. Must be how he knew born. Mavis, the name you go dead. <laughs> Mavis, the name the poor child Merasmus. With a squinge up face like that, they should have named him Merasmi. <laughs> now, Mavis, don't say I say, because eh? you know I don't mind people's business. But girl, between you, me, and this window, the child will look nothing like the father. If you ask me, he looked like Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Same batty ears and tolum nose. Hey, hey, Mavis, I have a call coming in. Yes, girl, hold on. Good morning, Gladys Ramsey residence. Can I help you? Oh, good morning, Pastor. How are you? No, no, no. I was on the phone with Miss Mavis. No, Pastor, we wasn't gossiping. Oh, gossiping is a sin. I didn't know that. Anyway, I was just being a good friend to Miss Mavis. She having a little trouble with the hemorrhoids. What? Oh, hallelujah. You're going and pray for she hemorrhoids in church Sunday. That's nice. That nice pasta. Yes. And I wouldn't forget the sweet bread for the cakes here Sunday. All right. God bless her. Mavis, you're still there? Girl, you see how you're a blessed woman? That was pastor. He say he go in and pray for you. But maybe so he's a man of the cloth I can't lie to he. Eh hey, hey, look Janet passing. Hold on, hold on. Morning Janet, morning. Hold on, hold on. You look nice. Yes, in that lovely dress. No, 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 I ain't forget the thing I have for you. Check me next week, right? No, on the phone with Miss Mavis, she have it. Oh, God, I tell you already, I forget. All right, God bless her. Mavis, you still there? Girl, that was Janet wobbling down the road with she dry up husband. But like she put on a little weight. She looking like a young whale. Mavis, don't say I say, because you know I don't mind people's business. But girl, last week I hear she sent that same dress to dry clean and they sent it back saying they don't do drapes. <laughs> hey. But Janet, too miserable man. You remember that $20 she lent me about three months ago? You know she's still hunging me down for that money? She too unreasonable, man. Them trendy woman and them. When I had the money, I go pay she. Eh, eh, Hubert. Girl, since that husband of mine retired, he go driving me up a wall. Mm -hmm. Girl, I went by the doctor. And as I walk in, the doctor tell me I'm looking good for my age. If you see a girl, he tell me my cholesterol level is down. Mm -hmm. And the walking is helping me lose a few pounds. Girl, as I reach home, I strip myself naked as a born. Mm -hmm. If you see a girl, eh, eh, he go walking and want to know if what I doing, if I gone mad. So I tell him, I say, you know what the doctor tell me? He want to know if the doctor didn't mention my big ass. I say, no, dear, your name didn't come up. What do you do, miserable man? Hey, hey, hey. Morning, morning. Hey, hey, yeah. He too miserable. Girl, so we start to argue. You know them men and them, them trini man, they good do tesh. Mm -hmm. Girl, he quarreling at me and telling me I go dead before me. You could believe that? I go dead before he. I say, hey, hey, hey. I ain't go dead before he. He say, yes. He said, when I dead, Mavis, that's what he tell me, when I dead, he put it on my tombstone, here lies Gladys Ramsey, cold as usual. 
I say, I ain't taking that. So I say, you go there before me. And when you dead, I put it on your tombstone. Here lies you, but stiff at last. Them man and good girl. Eh, eh, I ain't tell you what about Janet's daughter. No, girl, don't say I say. Because you know I don't mind people's business. But girl, well, you know Janet's daughter born in America. And she don't come Trini too often. Right. Anyway, Janet's always telling she she need a good Trini man. Mm -hmm. Girl, she try all kind of man in America. Yes, the white, the Italian, everybody. She decides she going to try a Trini girl after all these years. Mm -hmm. Well, girl, she whine and she dine the man when she meet him. Yes, girl, a nice little man in labor. The nice Trini boy. And she carry him home. Mm -hmm. And she said, Trini man. I hear how all you good. I want you to do to me what all your Trini men does do best. She said that, girl. So he tell her, he said, well, you know, I have to take off all your clothes. She said, well, I like that. She, the girl, she take off all she clothes. She said, Trini, hurry up now. I want you to do to me what all your Trini man does do best. You know what he tells? He said, I had to tie her up, girl, tie, girl, she tie up. He tie she foot so, one so, one the next hand so, the next hand so. She said, Trini, hurry up now. I want you to do to me what all your Trini men does do best. Girl, he teeth the girl TV, the microwave, the washing machine. Yeah. Okay, people. Let me get one more time out there for Nikki Crosby. Woo. Nice. Nikki, I like that girl. I like where you bounce me with. Yes, and I have a Metro car there. She just hit me with she two buses. She beat 35 and anyhow, you know, let me go. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen from Trinidad and Tobago. Let me hear it one more time for Nikki Crosby. Yeah, them both boy. Me know that what them Trini men does do. All right. Well, let me give all your time check. It's approximately about that. Caribbean Comedy 2003. Mouse and monkey walking through the forest. And while they're walking, going about half mile under a coconut tree, Elephant relaxing, female elephant. Throw back the trunk, have your two legs up in the air, and relaxing. Mouse ain't easy, you know, here, mouse. Monkey, well, mouse is talking. Eh? He said, Monkey, you know how long I want to fix up an elephant? <laughs> monkey said, Don't talk stupidness, no mouse. You could do anything to that, he said, I could do anything to that. What's wrong with you? You crazy or what, monkey? You know how long I want to fix an elephant up? Monkeys, how long? Mouse say weeks, weeks. <laughs> say, all right, partner. Mouse jump on an elephant and he start putting down work. Weeks, weeks. <laughs> and elephant just relax. He make a movie and shift and mouse working. When monkey realized the advantage taking place, he said, nah. I can't leave my partner mouse. Oh. Monkey fly up the coconut tree, pick one big green coconut, and he send it down and hit elephant right here. So, bop! Elephant board. Oh! Mouse, you're boring, you bitch, you're feeling it now. Yeah, yeah. All right, people. We keeping the program moving. Anyhow, people, right about now, the next performer coming on stage. This man is no stranger. If you used to come to the you go see him doing this quartz advertisement. I know what we're talking about. But I want all to put all your hands together and let's welcome on stage Errol Fabian.
Aral. Woo! Well, I'm here for the Kings and Queens of Comedy Show. Okay. Yeah, so the, toward the stage will be dirty after the show, so they ask me to come up to just clean the stage. I'm up, I sweep, and I vacuum. Yeah, well, I think it's well. a little more than that. I think it's a little more than that. So, so tell us about yourself. Tell us about your career in comedy. Well, I've been doing yeah. stand-up comedy and sundry things in entertainment for about 22 years now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I write, produce, and direct material for stage and television. Uh -huh. Well, let me tell you earlier, the wife, she warned me when I leave in home to be on my best behavior. So you see me? I'm going to be on my best behavior. So as a lad, I went by the drugstore to buy some condoms. Just in case. No, I wasn't planning to do nothing. Eh? But fellas, you know how the thing does go. You never know. So just in case... I say, let me get some condoms. But you know, condoms is not a thing you're going to the drugstore and say, yeah, give me a pack of condoms, please. No. Condoms is something that if anybody has by the cashier, you have to make a little spin and check around because it's not something that's going to act so hard. And I don't know why they don't put it out front so we could pick it up and just go and pay for it. Just have it behind the cashier. You know, so it's... And a woman woke up, so I, I watch headache medicine. Cold medicine, she go on, I go to her next man come I want to watch tampon, all kind of serene and thing. And then nobody there and I slip back over and I said, Can I have a pack of pam condoms, please? And nearly buy pampers there. I say, Can I have a pack of condoms, please? She said, eh? <laughs> Condoms, can I have a pack, please? You want condoms? <laughs> yes, can I have a pack, please? What size you want? Size? Yes, sir, we got small, medium, and large. What size are you? So, darling, in Trinidad, one size fit all. Just give me... Please, just give me a pack of condoms. I'm sorry, I gotta know your size. Are you small, medium, or large? I said, Dudu, I was never in a situation where I had to compare. So I do not know if I am small, medium, or large. Can I please have a pack of? She said, I'm sorry. I got to know your size, else I can't sell you the thing. I said, so what we have to do now? She said, well, let me see what you got. Excuse me, come on, let me see what you got. Uh, this is my job, it ain't gonna do me nothing. I see these things all the time. Let me see what you got and I'll know what to give you. Nobody else in the drugstore, so. Yeah, boy, out with the love muscle. She take it in she hands, so. She say, This is what you're making all that noise about? ashamed of you. Hey Janice, could you bring a pack of small condoms for me please? Janice. Janice, I said, oh my God. <laughs> Medium Janice. <laughs> hey Janice. Medium. Janice, please bring me a pack of <laughs> Oh my God, large! Janice, please bring me a pack of large <laughs> Forget the condoms, Janice, could you bring me the map? You never know, you know, and that's why gentlemen, you know, we have to, you know, prepare ourselves for anything that happens, you know, because women, fellas, women, they don't understand us. They just don't understand. We don't set out to be bad. Men are good. Situations come up that kind of make us look like we're not good, but men are, we are all good. Listen, my wife and me getting one big bacchanal the other day. She find out that I was 
unfaithful. And it wasn't something that I do for spite. It happened accidentally. You understand? And I was honest enough to tell her what happened, but she was upset and she said she don't understand it because... How are you going? He, he's supposed to be doing that? She said I don't understand it because all women have the same thing. Fellas, Gentlemen, do all women have the same thing? At all, they don't, they don't have the same thing at all. I don't know where she got that notion from. Let me tell you something. It is the only thing when they call it by the correct name, it does song wrong. You cannot call that by the right name at all. How would you tell a woman, oh gosh, you like to take a piece of vagina, you know? It does song right. Something wrong with that. Gentlemen, I lie. No, and all men have the front name for it. I just call it the fluff. I love the fluff. Now, if it's one I'm pretty close to, I say fluffy. You know, cause we close. We like that. If it's one I now meet, I say fluffers. Out of respect, you understand? How's the fluffers? But my wife telling me all fluff is the same. All fluff could never, 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 never be the same. To begin with, they just all look different. Yet bounce up a fluff sometimes looks so. Then again, they might meet a fluff that looks so. You know, then I get a meter of love that looks so. But no matter how it look, we love the fluff. The fluff makes the world go wrong. You hear what I'm telling you? You think if when George Bush did decide, they decide to invade Iraq, if Madam Bush did tell him, don't do that, and he said to hell with you, we invaded, and she said, no fluff. Invasion plan done. You hear what I tell you? Because the fluff makes the world go wrong. You hear what I tell you? Fluffs don't only look different. Fluff does taste different. Yes. Sometimes it tastes a fluff. Mm. It tastes mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then again it tastes a fluff. It tastes mm -mm. But no matter how they taste, we love. The fluff makes the world go wrong. You hear what I'm telling you? The fluff does also come in different sizes. And that is important to note. The fluff comes in different sizes. Sometimes you bounce up a fluff and you have to... <laughs> yeah, no. Then again, sometimes it bounces up a fluff and it's ha 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 But no matter what the size, we love the fluff. The fluff makes the world go wrong. Don't doubt it. The fluff is crucial. And let me tell you, gentlemen, some of you may not know, so it is my purpose to edify you. How oh, you like the choice of word there? Gram grammatic. Yes. Edification is, in, is important. That if you are uncertain about a fluff, there is a test that you can perform. A test that will let you know all you need to know about the fluff. It is called the ha test. It is called the And for those of you who may be unsure as to how one must conduct the ha test, I will help you. You get close to the fluff. Real close right there now don't test it we are about to test it so you get close to the, the 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 fluff and you make sure you have a good vertical motion like this 
Okay? If you don't have free flow, make space. You get close to the flow. And then you make sure the room is quiet like this. And you say, ha! And as you say, ha! You pivot down. Now if you say, ha! And pivot down and you hear nothing like this. It's good. It's a good sign. No, that's not good. It's a good sign. But if you say, ha! And pivot down and you hear, ha! 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 Going. You're looking very hot and nice. Must be lovely to be able to wear boots and fabulous leather and thing, eh? Look hot in this country. Look good. Look hot, girl. Wear the clothes. Hold on. May I have no breasts? So the top does fall down plenty. <laughs> Are they trying to look sexy, you know, because I need a man. I need a man. My mouth too big. And because my mouth big, no man want me. They feel everything else big too. But it's not true. The only thing I'm big on me is my arm, ass and my mouth, and everything else tight. <laughs> I will tell you this, doing this job has made my hands very tired. <laughs> you catch? Hold your slow so tonight. Don't be slow. Come now, man. Let me hear you. You know my name is Haddad. My surname is Haddad. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Me a full Arab. All right? And furthermore, my fans falling down too. And furthermore, all you are just catch my ass. I'm taking off my shoes. I can't take all of this pressure. To, looking hot for what? Me again, nothing anyway. Anyway, back to the story. All you are going through the airport. All you is real serious shit with me and the Arab name, you know. You see this nose? And you see this name? It is pressure coming through JFK. Pressure for Arab people. You understand? They may feel like from Trinidad, you know. It's only when I open up my mouth, they realize, where the bitch from? <laughs> She's scary. But I'm serious. It is very hard for me because my name is Haddad. And I'm from Trinidad. You understand? All you serious, serious shit. A customs officer watch me and tell me. He said, are you all serious? Swear to God. Because <sighs> no Trinidad was on the terrorist list at one time. Donna Haddad from Trinidad? Are you serious? Well, all your one time when a man watch me so and say that my bumsy start to clap and spasm. You know when you're bumsy because you're frightened. All you get frightened. I start to think about what inside my suitcase. I think, oh God, what a pack, what a pack. I pack my panty, I pack my bra, I pack jeans, I pack shoes. Thank God I leave the dildo home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. All the ladies know what I'm talking about. No, don't be shy. All of us have one. We just keep it a secret. <laughs> so anyway, all the men had had, they pulled me out the line. They put me on the side in a random search along with Muhammad, Akbar, and Abdul. Very random indeed. So before we standing up there, and the three of them is three men. And I stand as the only woman. And they give the three men, three honky men, to search them. And they give me a dry ass bitch to search me. <laughs> well, I stand up for my rights. I make Trinidad proud. I cost swear JFK. <laughs> I say I want a man to search and seize. <laughs> Yes. So next thing you know, of course, she woman, she of course, you know, I get stuck with the damn fool anyway. So she's like, um, spread your legs. Well, I know that very well, so I spread my legs. <laughs> and then she take the metal detector and she passing it close, close to my skin, very much violating my private parts. She going down my neck, down my breast, by my back. She going down by my leg. As she reach here, I say, oh God. She comes so and she reaching close, close inside my leg. And as she reach here with the metal detector, I say, thank God, Robert, and I done. 
I will tell you why. You see, Robert, a man I used to be with before, had two gold teeth on the left side of his mouth. And once when he went south of the equator, he did lose one. And might have gone... Yes, girl. That is the shit I just have to put up with. I will tell you this life hard, you know. Trinidad, are you trainees in the house? Trainees, are you here? Trainees all over the damn place. You're like flipping. I know. Got ants, bachak, you're everywhere. You're like salty and everything. Well, you're legal, right? If you're legal, hush. Yes, back to the story. So any, oh, hold on. You don't, don't feel bad. Jamaicans in the house. Two. There's a set of shit Jamaicans in the house. Oh, all right. The rest of all you in the house. <laughs> St. Vincent, St. Lucia, every saint in the house. Everybody in the house. We all here in the house, right? Okay. So people feel my name is Hada. I have cash. They want to grab me. I hear all kind of talk about they want to grab me. So I come out and tell them I have no money. Okay. And I tell them all you know. It's all you want to grab me here. If you want to grab me for the rocket talks, fine. But if you want to grab me to get cash, forget it. Because they have nobody to call. You understand? And secondly, I will have to work off my ransom. How much you want? 50,000, 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Well, you're real like shit, you know, shit. But you know, I love Errol too bad. I love Errol Fabian. Give Errol Fabian a round of applause. He's too sweet. I love him. I really love that man, you know, he's really, really a special gentleman indeed. In fact, a lot of the performers that are on the show, they call us kings and queens. Me a queen or not, ne? Eh? I's me. But I will tell you this, he called us fluff. He gave it grace. Fluff. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Pretty, pretty fluff. But woman in the house, first of all, uncross your legs and give it air. Give it air, give it air. Breeze it, breeze it. Give yourself a little air. And let's, we are women, and we own our bodies. You own your body? Right, you're in control of what is yours. We could call it the real name, right? We're going to call it the real name? Vagina. That's right, it's called a vagina. People are like, oh my God, vagina, what is that? Because you see, when you're growing up, nobody calls it by the real name, you agree? Nobody calls the vagina the vagina. They're afraid to talk about it, they're afraid even when you're growing up, your parents tell you the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? They say, like, go and wash your butterfly. Come and wash your flutterby. Come and wash your popsy, your nanoosh, your what? Your what? Quick, quick. Your nung nungs. Your saltfish. <laughs> Come and wash her saltfish. Very rough. <laughs> her mother wasn't easy at all. <laughs> Girl, that thing's melon, bitch. Come and wash that saltfish. <laughs> But I will tell you tonight, we have to pay homage to the great vagina. And I say, let's have a little pussy church in here. Hail pussy! That's right, we're going to say some hail pussy! We're going to bring, a coming off now. We're going to bring a little pussy church inside here because we have to pay some respect to the great vagina. Because plenty of people like to knock up the vagina, rough it up, treat it as if they could do it what they want. Slap up women, domestic violence, rough you up, treat you bad because you're small, you're tiny, you can't be the ass to pulp. But this is where all of all you come from. Even those ungrateful bullers that turn their back on the great vagina. But a woman's vagina is a glorious thing. This thing could take anything. You can't mash me up. You know why? This thing has nine lives. It could take any size dick. Big, small, shaped like a seed, wound to the side, bend to the left. Sometimes you're going with the man, you're like, I do it. You're coming, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. Good night, folks. Take it easy. You're gone. Make some noise for Donna Haddad. Donna, come and take a bow. Donna, you have to take a bow. Put back on the shoe. Pull up the top. Pull up the pants. Take a bow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I am Nikki Crosby. How are you? Well, how are you? 
Good. Hello, we ain't leave till now. We'd have hot sun to come up here. Nobody ain't talking to we, you know. It cold. And one thing about all your people who just come home to the islands, something I just always have to talk about. When all you see, now I could only talk for Trinidad, but I know it's happening near the islands. When all you see, all you come to Trinidad, we just take two weeks off. We just cook. We just carry all your maracas. We just carry all your hair there everywhere. When all you come to New York, all you give us a quarter, tell me to take the A train down to the tank, get it 54th Street. This thing that's happened so that as a girl come and meet me easy to find where's the love but you know one thing we we must admit i mean everybody know it cold out here and we just grumble to come out here because home real sweet with all the things but we come out here because we know all you under stress and we just want to make all you laugh and relax when i say relax partner don't relax too much eh? you know what i mean now, what I like about here, too, is that they like to take us out. Like last night, we went out. All of us went out. We went to this nice club down Manhattan. They took us to dinner and all of that. And I lime in with my friends up here and thing. And, you know, we lime in. You know, ladies, we like to talk about man. You see a man pass. They say, mm, 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 mm. And we girls just talk. Eh, fellas? Oh, you don't think we talk about all here, but we talk about all here from the top right down midway. Then we just come further down. But that's cool. So my girls and we watching fellas and thing last night and they say, Nikki, if you had to choose a beverage to describe the kind of man you like, what you would choose? My girl from Jump Up. She said, you see me? I like my men like coffee. I like them dark and hot and keep me up all night. I say, all right. My next girl from Jump Up. She said, mm -mm. I like my men to be like Coca-Cola, like them tall and quenching my thirst and the real thing. I say, uh-huh. They said, Nikki, if you had to choose a beverage, what you would choose? I said, I would choose Johnny Walker. Say Johnny Walker. Nikki, that's not a beverage. I said, no, it's a liquor. Oh, Lord. Poor man watching me. They didn't catch the joke at all. It's all right. It's for the ladies. It's all right. Quick thing. Because I go in and bring on a legend here, and she's the fittest woman in the business today. But I saw her down on Church Avenue, and I said, what are you doing down here? Breeze, weather cold, summer done. Breeze blowing. Granny dress blow up. Granny hold down she hat. Breeze blow a little more. Granny dress blow up. Granny hold down she hat. A big wind pass. Dress blow up over she ears. I couldn't take it no more. I say, Granny, what you doing? Hold down your dress now. What you doing? She said, boy, that down there is 95 years. You see this hat? And now buy it. <laughs> say, yeah, yeah. Right about now, you know why I just use these words? Because I'm going to bring on the legend here. Show some love for the queen of the Caribbean. The fittest woman in the business. Let me get a round of applause for Granny. Bring she nice. And she fit. I hear she in class now working out. She real fit. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I am Granny Grandson, Sin. Love, respect, Pablo G, along with Lady Guy Mine. Yeah. Way out of GT. How is everybody? All are going all right? Well, I am the repairs, but I still fit in between, you know? Yes. These people waiting to see me and I'm glad to give them all that. Yeah. Pump it up. Now you know say my granny the fittest granny. And anytime she comes, you know she's ready. Molly Pablo G along with Lady Guy Bang. Every time. My granny. She is the fittest granny. But she the whole lady. Yes, but don't tell me so. Don't play in the line, 
She's a young lady. And she's a ninja too. Oh my God. Granny fit, granny fit. My granny, yes, she fit, fit, fit. My granny, yes, the fittest granny. My granny, yes, karate granny. What you know? My granny, yes, the nicest granny. My granny, yes, the healthy granny. My granny, yes, karate granny. My granny, she na whole lady. My granny fit, granny fit. Watch me, granny, my granny fit, granny fit. Watch me, granny, my granny fit, fit, fit. Watch me, granny, my granny fit, fit, fit. You know why? Because. My granny is the fittest granny, la. My granny is a young lady. My granny is the fittest granny. My granny is a long lady. I watch out, my granny. Why not she weighs? Put the pound all in the face. My granny is the fittest granny. My granny is the nicest granny. Lord have mercy. When I was small, I had no sense. My granny by a guitar, the fittest granny. My granny, Lord have mercy. My granny is the nicest granny. A granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit, granny fit, granny fit, Lord, granny fit, fit, fit. Come here, boy, granny fit, granny fit. Try granny, she fit, fit, fit. What you know? Stop, stop, my granny, everyone, my granny, my granny is the fittest granny, my granny is the only one with it. Get granny, my granny, my granny. We want it to make that boy. Yeah, come. We just had to tell them that because if we left them in the back too long, somebody go thief the mic. We in Brooklyn, you know. Yeah. I know. We send a lot of all you up here, and I hear they sending we back 45 at a time now. The other day, I was outside a casino on Frederick Street. I went and park my car. I went and squeeze two cards. I said, hey, guy, you got to just park there, give me $5. I know. They send him back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to be here. And I know the family is here. Lovely. Uh, to begin with, I would like to start because when I'm finished, I'll be through. <laughs> Mr. Slater is happy. Um, Mr. McLeod is very happy. And I know why, because the place is full. Yes. Um, if I had more time, I could pass her on a hat, but we'll leave that for another night. Yes. So, um, this is a little lanyard. Um, when these big international artists try to sing our calypso, they run into problems. Yes. Edmundo Ross, Harry Belafonte, Dean Martin, Billy Eckstein, Louis Armstrong, they run into problems. Now this is, this is Mr. <laughs> Mama Luka Boo Boo by Lord Melody, but this is uh, Edmundo Ross trying to do it. Mama Luka Boo Boo, they shout, their mother told them, shut up your mouth, that is your daddy, oh no. My daddy can be ugly, so shut your mouth, go away. Mama, look at Boo Boo, dear. Shut your mouth, go away. Yes, you see, it's a problem, eh? Yeah. Yes. Lady, you can't get a seat? Uh, sit down anywhere, man. Yes. Give the lady a round of applause. The best part of the show. You have a seat right in the corner there. Yes. Yes. She has it in down? Uh-huh. 
Yes. So, um, Dean Martin, favorite of mine, but I'm um, always drunk. This is Dean Martin doing, I'll give for the benefit of the young people in the audience. We'll do a, an original piece by Dean, and then we'll do Dean Martin singing Drupal T. Remember the 60s, ladies and gentlemen, who would remember? So Drupati had a song, Devan lick up menani, Devan lick up menani oi, Devan lick up menani, Devan lick up menani oi, Devan lick up menani, Devan lick up menani oi, never come and see what he did. Yes, this is Dean Martin doing it for the Hollywood people. This is Dean Martin singing Drupati. Devan bombs my grandmother. Not an old talk, the van bongs of my granny from on the side wall, the van bongs of my granny. What a tragedy! Never come and see what he did to my funny. Never come and see. What he did to my nanny. Thank you. And then crazy. The party no start. Ha ha. Party no start. Ha ha. And they go in non stop. We are breaking up. And it's whining, grinding. You know the song? Sing it. And it's whining, grinding. We are shaking up. Now imagine Mr. Billy Eckstein. You know he's a black um, American, what you call Afro-American, is that they call them? Negro, baritone. This is Billy Eckstein doing the crazy. The party is hell. The party is near. It's a non-stop do. For folks like me and you So get in the groove It is time to move It is time to whine And shake your body line Gyrate, rotate, oscillate Concentrate, levitate, but please don't masturbate. Thank you. <laughs> black Stalin, tonight the black man come out to party. Tonight the black man come out to... Tonight the black man come out to boogie woogie. So let me do one, let me, you know the song? Imagine Mr. Louis Armstrong, Satchmo. This is Louis. I want you to clap your hands in time with the music very slowly. Tonight, the black man's here to party. Tonight the black man is here to jam versus his versus and. Tonight the black man's here to boogie woogie yes and. Come on, hold on, hold on to your man versus us as 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 as
take a bow, Relator. Come and take a bow. The Lord Relator. I find you do no ex tempo, man. Give me a little verse ex tempo now. Give me a little quick thing before you go. Well, Nikki girl, you're looking sexy. You're looking nice in your short mini. What the Relator saying is the truth. I like you. Every tall black boot. The stocking that you have on is really nice. And Nikki Crosby, please take my advice. But when you're wearing them fancy clothes, all your business exposed. And he looked like such a nice man. Give him a round of applause, our gems out of the Caribbean, the Lord Relator. He's one of our well-rounded entertainers. Okay, we are just keeping the show going. So we have one of the gems out of TNT. This is a man, you not only have to hear him play, you have to see him. It's an experience, relax. He deserves to be here representing. Put your hands together for Dana Goldstein. See that there, remember I have a piece of meat in my fridge, boy. <laughs> hey, listen. It have certain things 
that worried me and certain things I didn't understand why it happened to me. Why is this, oh, you're giggling, you're giggling with the woman grinning like she's Afro home. <laughs> Rest. And I come to make that point tonight because people all you wouldn't understand. I grew up in Trinidad. And if you stand up in the middle of Trinidad, any one hour drive to any direction, you could meet the sea. The sea, where the middle of what is? You want the dead center? That's Lapirus. <laughs> Damn foolish, just you asking me. <laughs> if you want the dead center, that's Lapirus. And if you're living and want to dead, that's the Porter Spring General Hospital. Where do you have your hospital? Listen to me. It never worried me until two weeks ago, a man says, Sprang, we organized a thing to go by the sea, by the beach. And I say, I ain't going. It never worried me because me don't go by the sea. I'm not a carrot, me not a bed in the sea. I allergic to fish. <laughs> Left them, let us stay home, and I go stay home. But it when he say, but well, you don't go by the sea, and I say no, it worry me, and I know why. And I want Trinidadian to identify with this. Long time when I was a little fella, we was living 15 minutes from the sea, if you walk. But my parents never wanted to go by no sea where they could walk to. So we used to have to go in the market and buy lettuce and cresses and piece of beef and rice and potato and all kind of macaroni and all kind of thing. Saturday and cook whole night. Saturday night because Sunday morning we're going by a beach what is two hours away and we had to drive. <laughs> because going by the beach was an occasion and they're keeping me up whole night. I caught enough chicken like the chicken do me something. <laughs> I caught enough cow. And I had to, I can't wear red jersey. The cow might come back together and run me down. <laughs> and we cook the food, macaroni pie, potato salad, heavy crescent, salad leaf, tomato, beaten lilac. <laughs> what color beaters up here? Beat by wheel purple. Beaten lilac, slice, thin slice, and all of that put in various bowls. And your mother bringing out, she going out wears. <laughs> Armitage, China, wears with pattern. <laughs> Cutlery, heavy knife and fork, Mark Sheffield, England. And they put all that together and we had to wash that at 6 o'clock the morning. They pack all our we with we are burning we in the car because we stay up a whole night to cook all this food and look pretty. You're right. And we jump in the car and we drive for two hours. And we reach a beach that dangerous. <laughs> and when we reach the beach with dangerous sun coming up and the instructions is... Don't go in the sea unless I go in the sea or go to water to your uncle. That is after I cook nearly the whole house of food. And my father going down the road to drink with people he does not know. And my mother decided to sleep in the car. So she inclined the seat and starts to sleep and said, don't go in the water without me. So after I do all that work, I am now bareback in a trunks and with water up to my ankle and playing in sun like if I a sunfly. <laughs> Don't play all you I know. Twelve o'clock, you're hungry. <laughs> what your mother didn't bring, she going out with us. And she shuffled England, caught Larry, took his children who was to eat with plastic spoon and in Namil home.
So when you come and say, Mommy, I'm hungry, she says, like, I make these children to eat me out. And you can't get nothing. So she give you six cricks. Dry, stiff, hardback cricks. And hot, sweet drink. You have gas all on your bird paper. And you're there, you eat your six cricks. And you drink your sweet drink. And you're still hungry, but your stomach are hard like Chinese arithmetic. And your father come with some drunk man and woman who he never see. And your mother pull out, she going out with us and feed them. All you and no pressure. When they're done, and your father going back with his drunk partner who nobody I know, they telling your mother, oh, you really cook. You have lovely wares. And your mother pull out a plastic bucket, put all the dirty wares, and send you to wash it. <laughs> you with your hard, hot, sweet drink, and quick stomach. <laughs> and when it's five o'clock, you ain't barely they see it, but you wash all the wares. They tote you back home and tell you your privilege. And when you have plenty, you must know to share. So all the food will leave back. They tell you, go and see if the neighbor eat. And my son, I just always say, I go bad talk my mother, I go bad talk my father, but I could never bad talk my neighbor. Them first line just be, thank you son, you eat yet? I say no, and they feed me. <laughs> it's the first time I get to taste what I cook. <laughs> you see why I don't go by the beach again? It left a sour taste in my mouth. Any stage this brother come on, he does mash it up. Wait, wait, wait. I begin up. Benji inside, boy. Respect to you. I begin up all my people and them down here. The people in pit up there, look at hear me. Don't worry. Next year we go. <laughs> right. Get your tickets early. <laughs> right. Nice. All the wicked, so lady people up there, them nice up there full, you know. Any stage this brother on. He mashing it up east west some Canada to, to listener. All the way from Barbados. Show some love for Trevor Dynamite. Eastman, show some love. Say yeah, yeah. Bring him nice. Hello. How will I? I will get to know you. You will get to know me. All the Trinities in the house? Any Jamaicans here? Barbados? Guyana? Hello? Denny's here? In America? And Johnny Cash just dead? And Bob Hope? In Guyana, no cash, no hope. <laughs> Give my Guyanese friends a clap. It's a mad, mad world we're living in, partner. Trust me. Things getting crazy left, right, and center. Uh, and in Barbados, the mental hospital is over incapacitated <laughs> but the poor people always say there are more madmen in than out uh, excuse me they got more madmen in the mental hospital than out yeah for real that's what the old people used to say. But it changed around now. Just the other day, I passing by the mental hospital in Barbados. And every time I approaching them big fence, with the madmen peeping through, I just shift to the middle of the road. <laughs> and I going down the middle of the road and I hear a voice say, Trevor Eastman, come here. When I look, a madman, 
So I ain't moving. He said, don't be frightened. Come here. So I step a little closer. He said, come closer. Have something to tell you. So I go closer. He said, come closer. So I go right near the fence. He said, put your ear there. Don't be frightened. I put my ear. Hear the madman tell me, Eastman, I could get you out of there, you know. Hello. The old people say every madman got the old saints. For the pagans would know there is a madman who is making my life hell in Barbados. The man burn up the doctor, light a hotel, snatch the budget speech from the prime minister. And you know what hurt? He has the same name as me. Trevor Eastman sent to the psychiatric hospital everybody don't care where you go madman some people tell me god bless them two hands hey so i get i mean after six months of stress i decide i must meet this fella with the same name as me i gone to the mental hospital go by the gate Security guard stopped me. Who are you going to look for? I said, Trevor Eastman. And who are you? I said, Trevor Eastman. He said, no, I ain't asked you who you looking for. Who are you? After all, our Trying to show this man, I am Trevor Eastman. They let me in. I go in to see this Trevor Eastman, and he in a cage. I said, boss, you know me? He said, no. I said, well, let me tell you, right? My name is Trevor Eastman. I'm a comedian. And you got people with your foolishness thinking I is you. And as a madman, he said, don't dig nothing in here to feel as a comedian. Have we got madman smart partner? Hey, right by the mental hospital gate. One to stand up every morning, eight o'clock. Bus stop right there. And three sisters waiting for the bus to go to work. And watch the madman. Blue. Yellow. Next morning he go brown, lila, gray. Next morning white, black, black. You know, after a week, them three sisters realize this madman have to have x-ray vision. He know exactly what color panties them wearing. So the sisters decide they're going to trick him. Then rain none. And standing up at the bus stop, madman look and can't decipher. But in real madman style and fashion, he said, Curly, naughty, ball! <laughs> it's a mad world we live in. And then we got madmen and all kind of size, heights and fashion. Hey. And you know, I'm from Barbados. So everywhere I go, hear them people, bullo. <laughs> Don't laugh. Not that I won't bull, but I'm a man busy 24 hours a day. I just ain't got the time. It's a nasty job. Somebody got to do it. 
So if you are a bullet, don't be shy. Raise your hand. But imagine two bullets. And for those of you who don't know what is a bullet, that's the noun. Bull is the verb. Bullying is the pronoun, adjective, adverb. Hello? And two bullets having a conversation. And one said, Yo, you heard about the war? The other one said, What war? He said, Where, What kind of radio you listening to? Him? What papers you reading? What TV you got? The war in Iraq, fool. You ain't know America attack them people from behind. And some countries against it, some countries for. So will you think, hear the bullet, Lord, if thy soul and countries against and some for. When America attack Iraq from behind, you think Greece hell? How would you feel it? Everybody get over here. I, 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 I know about them homosexual thing. Nothing about there. Look, just hear there. Two men gone fishing. 200 miles off Barbados near Trinidad. Uh, uh, and all them catch was a little shark whole week them fishing and all them catch was a little shark one get bored tell the next one hey what you gonna do with that shark he ain't big enough for two uh, look around the ocean and see no next boats in close proximity he said look Nobody ain't around. Let me bully you. And then you bull me. And who bull the best? Get the shark. Fella say he first. Bull the man for 45 minutes. When he dead. Look at him, man. My turn now. Man said, you turn? Why well, don't eat shark? The next are coming from TNT. Listen nice comedy in your rukunk. Show some love. Anyhow, Brooklyn Pussy, you will never get it better than this. Larry Joseph and Susan Kennedy. Combination comedy. Brooklyn, give them a round of applause. Let them feel some love up in here this night. You know it's all good. Laughing, eh? All you laughing, all the feel police work easy. I even get my salary yet, eh? I mean, I ain't sure to get it there eh? with the way things going. Anyway, I will still do my work because I find people getting chopped, shoot, and chopped too easy.
all this kidnapping going on the thing I don't understand is this don't laugh no man I try to be serious here but my police can be serious for what what's that don't tell me sorry don't laugh What I don't understand is this. The way everybody have gone in the country. Why it is the commissioner that sent some police out to arrest people with a piece of stick in there? I waited for them to pull a gun at me, you know. The same way how money does disappear from the central bank. <laughs> because I remember the time when I went in the barracks to train to be a police. I said I would have come out and do some work for the country. They put me on a Jamet squad. Boys, every night, I had to be running down Jamet to lock them up for selling what God gave them. The commissioner, I know the breed, size, shape, and temperament of some of these Jamet we have to arrest, you know. Sometimes they just come from out of the blues, just so. I have a feeling this girl feel eyes are masquerader, you know. <laughs> Hello, good night. I want to hear what you're selling. I say it's fifty dollars for a blow job, a hundred dollars for a chuck, and eight hundred dollars for spending night. She real expensive boy. <laughs> but like she really think guys are masquerader. Good night. You come to socialize our. You would love that, eh? Look off. Good night. What you want? I am here to detain. You look determined. Hello? You looking for me? You have no respect for the law. Regretfully, no. Hello? You looking for somebody? Look, look, look. I am not a hard man. Who are you telling me that for? I ain't finished talk yet. I am not a hard man. I'm willing to drop the charge if you desist from soliciting. The one from who? Huh? <laughs> Look, talk English now. I will drop the charge if you stop whoring. <laughs> so wait. You had to use all them big words just to tell me that? Deliciting sources. Me ain't thief nothing from nobody, you know. Why selling his mines? Mines! Oh, you're selling mines. You're a terrorist. I'm sure you could find something else to do, you know, something you train for like a trade. I do what I does best. And what, and what that? 
Hello, you're looking for me? Uh-huh. What's your name? Alata. Hello. You looking for me? I want your surname. Vagina. Hello. A lot of, a lot of what? Look, you're interrupting my business. You're throwing sand in my rice, you're choking smoke in my wheel. Give me a chance now. Look, you ain't see me doing nothing, so you can't charge me with nothing. All you need to rewrite the constitution and prevent forcible entry. Shoot, you wasting your time, yes? Because I's a consenting adult. Girl, you don't realize how much trouble you could get in this hour denied doing this. The only trouble I see in so far is you. You could get raped. You could pick up STDs. You know what that means? I think it means stop. Where you learn to do police work? STD means sexually transmitted diseases. Oh, that is what I mean by that. <laughs> Why you don't hold your stupid ass? You trying to tell me thing and you don't know? Hey, listen, girl, I see police here, you know. That is what I mean. All you don't know one shit. It's how woman and children stop in the house and get raped. And the same men who rape them come knocking police, police, and kicking in the door, sit them enforcing the laws. Them need protection. All they had this whole place confused. Look, you wasting your time with me, yes? Hello? You looking for somebody? Listen you... now, I sure this is not the first time you get charged for this. It won't be the last, you hear? You want to know the last? The last judge that charged me for whoring end up getting a refund. What do you mean by that? Because the night before he was with me. Why all your hoes have lied so? Eh? <laughs> I lie? I lie? Is he that lie? For your information, is he that lie down on me the night? <laughs> when I went in court, he was the judge. I couldn't believe my eyes when I go in court and see the same judge that make affairs with me sit down up there like God. I thought he would have forgiven me like God. He end up charging me the same thing he pay me. Everybody whoring. Put your hands together for the lady who revolutionized, who revolutionized comedy in the Caribbean. Put your hands together for Rachel. Rachel. Rice is the lady's name. Hello. How we going? Oh gosh, no, 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 no. Somebody ball out how I looking good. Hello. I looking better. You don't stay the obvious. I lose a little thing. I lose a little thing, you understand? It ain't no great nothing. This is the result of horn. I a big woman. I could talk about it. I get a horn, I had a nervous breakdown, I stop eating. Because my favorite thing is pigtail. And every time I watch a pigtail, I think about it totally and I get real turn off. Say, yeah, yeah, it just pissed me off. I said, the pig could keep it precious, me want to watch that, sir. However, when I realized I was losing the size, I said, price, you're going good. So I started eating a little bit more vegetables. I started getting involved in the gym. I started track a man in the gym. That's why I keep going. <laughs> Watch me, a real nice man, you know. Big muscles, if you see the flex. Big. Leg. Boom, see, firm. Not a piece of prick. Nowhere to be found. I said, I said, darling, use your elbow. 
because that look like it's the biggest part of you. Put your whole hand, but let me not deter from there. Eh, eh, I losing the size and I come long I was a sat when I first started. Eh, eh, look at me. When I first started out and thing, I think I was my heaviest weight was a 285 or three something. And then I come down, I was a two something, and then I still a two something, I think. Anyway, it's my bones and the weave that heavy. Once a ball head has been 15 pounds lighter. Don't play the ass. Eh eh. All you and I trying on dresses and things. Now I accustomed going in my Ashley Stewart and thing and be and be in my size 20 and 21, 22 and this and that. I come down to 18, I come down to 16, I come in, you know, I'm going good. Eh, eh, I am a perfect size 14 now. Nobody would believe that it has size zero. Nikki Crosby, Titi Vain, she has up and down whole night in her blouse. <laughs> that is a blouse, that is a small shirt. Nikki telling me about she wearing size zero. I see people who does wear size zero and let me tell my big women out there. Don't get upset, size zero mean different things. If you only mean here is size zero. Size zero mean no brain. No bottom. No nanny. You can't tell me nothing else. Size zero and, and no satisfaction for no man. Because when you lie down on something small, so you missing the spot. You hitting the sheet. Where is girl? I can't find you. Hold on, hold on. Yes, I know you're here. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. You, you must, you, you can't find you. When you're size zero, what portion of the bed you just take up other than the, the pillow in the corner? Me now, I all over the place. You just roll and you're feeling it. I'm only telling you, look at here, player. Hold on. Look at right there. What's my name again? But we as women, let me help all you out, eh? Because when I am on stage, it is not only to laugh, it is to think. And I have a kind of thing these days where men are really just get offended. This is not to offend any man. This is to elevate my sisters. And for, for far too long, men, because they feel God put them here first, they're in charge. Unless you are taking man, Unless you are gay or bullying, you need a woman in your life. And it has plenty of people, especially the media, that are trying to phase me out. Queer as folk, queer eye for the straight guy, and this kind of shit. If my man sucks mismatch, that is all right. He balls matching. <laughs> no gay man telling my man how to dress hello i am here and you can't be more woman than me god put a hole you boring one i know that it's like to question strong women eh? because as far as any good man feel these men that we say good from the time you see a strong woman passing your woman that ain't look like she begging the hem for no man she's a lesbian so they're hitting me that right through. Hello, the only reason I ain't take every man in here is time. And half all, you ain't even worth taking and wasting my time. But why? I'm telling you the other day, I was the victim of, not the victim, the survivor of a stupid program in Trinidad. And this man went on and on about me. You go read it in the papers and think, think, think. I subsequently put his ass in court. However, <laughs> eh, eh, a woman called the program a woman call and say, well, I never really see her with a man, so that must be true. <laughs> I say, but Price, you wasting your time. What the hell are you bothering with women for? And then I say, you know what? My child is a, will be a woman. So I forge in ahead. I'm trying to tell these foolish women, love yourself. Love yourself. Walk around and start to love yourself. Because for every man that wants to bring you down, look at them. I try to tell man, when you want to pong me, you must look better than friggin' me. Say, yeah, yeah. It has some of them that fast. Man always want to comment on you. There are no ugly women. 
If you feel you're ugly, hello, it have Mac Maybelline, Revlon, L'Oreal. Get with the program, find a right head and fix your face. An ugly man is a sin unto the Lord. A woman can fix herself, hello, Mac. I just always say I am very sorry, but I am not sleeping with an ugly man. I could be 400 pounds. Can't see my knees. I see my nanny in a while. I'm sorry. I'm not sleeping with an ugly man. Because guess what? Don't go there. The body might need a little prayer, but the face is a miracle. Look at what next day and then watch this. You see my point? Now he might say, I ain't good looking. All right, let both of we get naked. You make an impression. I don't understand them. You know you ain't have nothing good to say, has. As always, I get paid to talk shit, you know. What does be all your excuse? I, I was reaching somewhere, you know. Where are rich? I was moseying along. Eh? So when the Bajan man, I cuss a Bajan. It's a kitchen. You know I have a Bajan man, somebody tell you. Oh, I have a Bajan man, it's nice. And he's hitting me, so he's what God bless my price is sweet. And I just well I know, baby, I know. Yes, I was telling you about ugly men. When a man ugly, nothing to help him. And some people will say money does make you good looking to a point because money helps a lot of them. Chris Rock, Jay-Z, Ja Rule, and them. You can say what you want. I remember Chris Rock on the first time we did see him on Boomerang. You didn't see them teeth? The bitch could have eat an apple through barbed wire. Or they could say what they like, he get some money and pay 10 dentists because them teeth was abnormal. Anyway, when you are making love to an ugly man, every woman in here knows, ugly or not, good looking or not, every man, when he is about to embark on that great journey called the climax. In other words, when he coming. A madness to stake the face. For those of you that just make love in the dark, turn on the blasted light. When a man ready to crack, no matter how sweet you're feeling, sister, open your eyes. Because then you will realize the beast within. Then it's like they retire. Oh, shit, oh, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. If it wasn't for the fact that your leg opened already, you would close it. Somebody shining a light, I have no idea what it means. Oh, okay. To done. Stop doing that, you're annoying me. Yes, we're rich. It's then we realize that women, hello, what it is going on on top of me? So if he is going to get ugly, why am I starting at the finish line? If he's ugly already, he is going to get uglier. very sorry and i realize another thing too that most men people let's talk about race let's can't talk about nothing else but man and woman and sex yes because i like it and i don't get much so when you don't get much you talk about it my man in barbados and i in trinidad at f oh not that one no he partner anyway men are attached 
attached. They have a psychological something. We have to go. And eh? we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. No, they ain't sit in turning back no clock. So guess what? Good night. <laughs> oh wow, what an amazing show. We had some amazing performances tonight. Not only is Caribbean cult comedy cultural and diverse, it is full of humor. I'm going to be laughing with these jokes for weeks now. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm jean Bierre Nixon on On The Scene on C-A-N-N, -N, bringing your community to you.